great. All right. So I just realized that I made the whole first lecture and that the sound was not on. So I'm going to try to do better this time and have the sound on. So I'm going to cut this up into just the um, syllabus and then we will cover the first quarter of the first um, uh, uh, unit in an independent recording just to verify that we have everything sorted out now. So if you'd like, I can give you a video of the failed first attempt. So uh, let's see, um, share my screen and we're going to share this. We're going to go through this document together. All right, and you are recording still, good. And I'm going to put myself right down, yeah. There we go. All right, so uh, you, this is comparative social evolution. You are in this class. There are about 60 of you. Um, I'm your instructor, Jonathan Pruitt. It's nice to meet you. Um, at my email address, pruittj at mcmaster.ca. If you email me, I will try to email you back quite promptly. Um, uh, class meets nominally meets um, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 4.30 to 5.20, uh, but these are all pre-recorded lectures. So although we will have some class periods where I sit virtually on Zoom and answer questions from several of the previous lectures, and I'm, I'm always gonna have virtual office hours, um, you can listen to these things whenever you want. I'm gonna to try to upload them with a horizon time that exceeds the day of. So if you think better in the middle of the night or if you think better at 6.30 in the morning after your run, uh, listen to these when you want. And um, please don't create a backlog of them though. Um, listen to them at least once around the time that you would have the class and then revisit them after, uh, before the exams, please. Um, Oh, course overview, we're going to discuss social evolution, compare them across the, the, the how, how societies evolve across different taxa, what are the uniting features, how are they similar or dissimilar, and how do we organize thought about social evolution, and how do we know what we think we know about social evolution, and what are the conflicts that have emerged conceptually uh, as a consequence of these different philosophical views about social evolution. All right, uh, materials. Nominally, there's a, um, a book for this course, but that book is actually not completely necessary. Um, all of my exam questions are going to come from my lectures. However, because I'm a fast talker and because I'm um, a some of you are not going to be able to, uh, are not strong auditory learners. I'm not a very good auditory learner. I do much better by reading um, material and slowly. Um, so having this book, especially for the latter half of the course, will be quite useful. The first half of the course, uh, it's going to be content just from these lectures, which can be supplemented by online readings because it's not, it's not controversial content. You can find uh, alternative sources that are written online. But for the second half of the course, when we go through the various taxonomic topics, it would be useful for you to be able to um, read those, uh, those chapters, I think. It shouldn't be that expensive. You can buy it from the bookstore or you can buy it from online, like on Amazon or whatever. Um, uh, the course activities, it says here that there are 20 to 30 minute modules. Some of them are gonna be like 40 minutes, but I'm gonna endeavor not to be um, yapping at you for 50 minutes at a time. Um, so going down here, these uh, weeks one through seven are conceptual based units that um, are going to be agnostic to the specific kinds of taxa um, uh, that they are applied to. So we're not gonna be talking about penguins or polar bears or whatever, although we'll, we'll use examples. These are, these are concept-based units that occur early on. What are the models that are used for social evolution? What are the, Sorry about that. What are the um, what are the the theoretical approaches to the understand our social evolution, and um, and what sorts of inferences do they give us? And then the second half of the course, weeks eight through thirteen, will be going through the various kinds of sociality that exist on planet Earth in terms of animals, and then applying the various concepts that we've learned from the first half of the course. Although these things say week on the left hand side there is no guarantee that I'm going to finish one of these units in one week. Some of them will be shorter, some of them will be longer. The sequencing will be maintained, but there is no guarantee that um, we won't run out of time at the end of this course. This is my first time teaching this class. This is my first time teaching this class in an online format. Um, and so 
um, we are we are learning lots of new things together. The good news is, although that will be tedious and annoying for some of you that a lot of this is experimental and new, the good news is that any time that this could negatively impact your assessment or could negatively impact your learning, then I will go out of my way to make sure that you are given the most generous outcomes possible under those circumstances to help you. So my uh, level of novelty that's transpiring in this course, new group of students at McMaster University, first time teaching undergraduates at Mac. Psychology students primarily, instead of a traditional biology group that I've taught in the past, there's lots of new. And so I'm going to, I'm trying to figure this out and be fair with you guys. And I will do my best to be more than fair while we learn this, uh, this sort of new series of ropes together. Evaluation. How will you get your grade? Um, so there are two midterms, which are each worth 30% of your grade, and a final, which is worth 40% of your grade. All of these things are multiple choice. There will be five options on every multiple choice question. Um, the distractor options will be superb. So do not listen to all of my lectures immediately before the exam and then go on there thinking you're just going to wing it. Right? So the exam questions are going to be challenging. You're going to have a limited amount of time. The, um, there should be between 30 and 50 exam questions over about 50 minutes to an hour. I'll give you a little bit of extra time. But, um, and they're going to be presented in a randomized format so that you, um, there's, it makes it somewhat more challenging, uh, challenging to cheat. Um, please don't cheat. Um, the midterm, second midterm and the final, the final is certainly cumulative. The second midterm is nominally cumulative because most of the second half of the semester will rely on theories that we developed from the first half of the semester and intuitions that we've developed together. So please keep up with the content of the course. Please um, turn my lectures into note cards. Please commit those note cards to memory. And then please be able to be fluent with these various topics when you show up for the exam. Make sense? Sounds good. Um, please check Avenue on the regular units one through five, the lecture um, slides are already up there. I will do my best to get these videos um, up promptly and, and maybe even up with long enough horizon time that you could listen to the first five series of um, lectures before uh, the first exam way early. Don't do that. Um, but also don't wait. Try to try to listen to them at a normative time, right? You know, like if it's if the lectures on Wednesday, you know, listen to it on Thursday morning, no big deal. If you've got 20 lectures you need to listen to immediately before the exam, bad news bears for you. Please don't do that. All right, student responsibilities. Um, I ha will have two TAs in the course. The TAs are Brendan McEwen and Han Hannah Anderson. They, uh, the contact information should be found online on Avenue under the instructors, uh, instructors tab. And, um, and, uh, yes, I've got someone screaming right outside of my room. I'm so sorry. All right. Um, please check your emails regularly. I'm going to be giving you emails, letting you know when we're having virtual class where I, you can ask me questions and I'll, uh, and, and there'll be links on the regular coming for zoom virtual office hours. Should you like to um, ask me questions in real time? Um, that, 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 everything, all the courses are, all the lectures are pre-recorded and then we'll have virtual office hours. Um, there is no turn, turn it in because we don't have any written components to this class. Academic integrity, please don't cheat. Um, I'm gonna make it difficult for you to cheat. Um, please, if you feel like you're the, content is too opaque or that you're not receiving it in a fair format, or you feel like the exams are unfair, please just talk to me about that. I would much rather have you guys uh, approach me with honest lucidity than be contending with some sort of disciplinary action later on. So um, just please, please, please um, don't cheat. And if you get caught, I have to, I'm obligated, I'm compelled to, um, to pursue the disciplinary action sanctioned by the university, but hopefully we'll not get to that situation. You guys are all senior undergraduates. I'm gonna to try to make this course not that onerous for you. So um, please don't cheat. Plagiarism, <laughs> there is no writing in this class. It's all multiple choice exams. So your ability to plagiarize would be quite diminished. If you're able to, if you're able to plagiarize in spite of the fact that you haven't written anything, well then um, that would be quite impressive. Uh, conduct, be respectful, I'll be respectful for you, be respectful to me. My, philosoph my philo philosophical approach to teaching is to teach you this material and to treat you like I would an interested group of my friends and peers rather than like some teacher and lowly student sort of like asymmetry and power. Like I don't, I don't really like that, I don't buy any of that. So um, I'm just gonna treat you like a group of interested friends and teach you 
the best way I know how, frankly and, um, and succinctly, if I can. Copyright and recording. You've got um, my lectures. Please don't sell my lectures. I think it's probably illegal. <laughs> I'd be shocked if there was a market for them. But please don't evaluate whether there's a market for them. <laughs> so so um, <laughs> there are lots of side gigs and side hustles you can have in life. Please don't hark my lectures. <laughs> uh, research checkbooks, there's no research in this course. Extreme circumstances. I mean, we had a global pandemic this year. Lots of weird things can happen. And the university reserves the right to basically build the ship as they're sailing it as needed if the, if, if the whole um, world blows up for one reason or another. And so we've had lots of new and novel. That's why you and I are having this sort of digital format right now. So um, bear in mind, the university is going to try to be as fair as possible. I'm going to be as fair as possible on if extreme circumstances arise. So I'm not your enemy. I am your ally. I want you to learn this information. I want you to have a good time because, you know, like compared to social evolution, it's so neat to think about how animals form collective units and how they're organized and about how all this stuff that you and I take for granted as being humans in our own society, how it got there, likely got there. And then to what degree does it bear resemblance to all of the other non-human animals and non-animal societies um, on earth? All right, so now I'm gonna cut this off and I'm gonna see if this recording has audio, which would make it superior to my last recording, <laughs> which is basically, it's not even a talkie, it's, it's a silent film. <laughs> I'm gonna make it in sepia and then see if somebody will um, <laughs> pay for it. I'll hawk my lectures, you can't. All right, so let's see how this goes. Uh, stop sharing, stop my recording.